Welcome to module two of the active versus passive learning course. In this module, you will gain knowledge on how active and passive learning looks in the classroom and how they both affect instruction. Before the objectives are introduced, I need all of you to go to the discussion section and complete the discussion titled Vision Board Module 2. At this time, you can pause the video and when you have completed and submitted your vision board for Module 2, you can press resume. Now that everyone has completed the Module 2 discussion, we will now introduce the learning objectives. The first objective reads as follows. After a lesson on active and passive learning, students will be able to describe how you would use each in the classroom and training environment. Number two, after a lesson on active and passive learning, students will be able to provide example on how each benefits the learners. And lastly, after a lesson on active and passive learning, students will be able to explain how each can affect the course design process. We've already discussed Gagne's nine events of instruction. Feel free to read through those again, uh, but we will move past this slide at this time. Okay, how to use active learning in the classroom. So active learning uses class activities such as discussion, debates, group problem solving exercises, case studies, practical labs, and peer-to-peer -peer instruction to enable students to connect with course materials on a deeper level. By establishing connections to their day-to-day -day lives and developing creative ideas and solutions, students engage in rich learning. They are given the opportunity to reflect on their own experiences and seek answers for themselves, often revealing the reality can be perceived from different angles as opposed to simply providing the one clear answer the teachers is looking for. All right. So this mode of learning is supported by facilitation, an instructional approach where the teachers ask questions to encourage discussion and let the students work on their own answers. A facilitator asks questions to guide students and encourage them to critically and reflect the situation in order to come up with their own solution, rather than providing the quote unquote right answer. Moving on here to how to use passive learning in the classroom. So in passive learning, the teacher is looked on as someone who has mastered the material and can impart it to others. Passive learners usually prefer straightforward presentations of material in an auditory form. So therefore, a teacher might give passive learners assigned readings or links to online lectures to supplement their learning. When you're dealing with passive learners in the classrooms, it is important that the instructor creates trust in the classroom, makes learning relevant, and normalize making mistakes. This allows student choice, and then it lets the student self report their own progress. Now let's get into how each of these benefits students. Over here on our left, active learning. So it stimulates and reinforces students' in-depth conceptual understanding of the course material. It also fosters an appreciation for the bigger picture and real life re relevance. All right, and also it helps students develop their analysis evaluation, public speaking, and collaboration skills. And lastly, it encourages creativity and innovation, mindfulness, and interaction. Over on the right, we have passive learning. All right, it benefits students, all right, because it gives them choice to depend on teacher's ability to carefully listen to students' contributions, which may be unexpected or controversial, and guide them towards understanding. It also may make introverted students feel uncomfortable due to more exposed nature of learning through discussions or group work.
Okay, now we're going to get into how it affects the course design process. So active learning. So it requires a flexibility in the course design. The amount of material and knowledge that can be covered and presented becomes limited because of the constraints of the time. And then feedback between student and teacher is back and forth. Over here, passive learning. It allows for a quick presentation of a variety of information and knowledge. Lecture notes to be planned, replicated, and reused by more students. And then also minimal feedback is acceptable. Hope you got a lot out of this course. Thank you guys for listening in. Have a good one.